Don't all weeks always start off just that much nicer when the Baltimore Ravens get a win? I know it does for me, and I'm sure it does for a lot of y'all, too. Team Keep It Clean, I'm here to share my post-game thoughts from the game that we all watched together against the Denver Broncos. The Baltimore Ravens took them on today, and they won. And not only won, but they won decisively. They won convincingly. They put up 41 points against that Broncos defense. Yes, that Broncos defense. And the Broncos only scored 10 of them things. Team, keep it clean. Before we get into it, make sure. Y'all been going crazy with it. I love y'all for that. Thank you for everything that y'all do. Make sure you not only subscribe to the channel, but turn your notifications on and leave a like on the video. Y'all been going cr absolutely, not even crazy, insane with the likes on the video. So I appreciate it. And let's just jump straight into this game. So, Baltimore Ravens. Let's start with the defense for a change. The defense, the way that they started this game off, the Ravens jumped out to a 10-0 lead. The Broncos got the ball first, and literally on the very first drive, Bo Nix, he threw a pass, super-duper Kyle 2.0, Kyle Vinoy. He tipped it, it tipped up in the air, and Mr. Ardarius Washington, who has been dropping every single pick that has been handed to him this season, Ardarius Washington said, nope, not this time. I ain't dropping this one. And he called it. We actually got an interception. I can't believe it. we actually got one. I mean, it was a long time coming, right? This was supposed to have been due. So it was a beautiful thing to see. But if we actually back up the play before that, the safety who got benched the previous week, Marcus Williams. And while Marcus Williams, he was watching the game last week, he was probably like, oh, he probably had that big smile on his face and was like, see, <laughs> it ain't me. It's not my fault that we're doing so poorly on defense. It's not on 32. So very first play of the game, Marcus Williams shot to, uh, to, to the running back and made a nice tackle. I think it was either, either a tackle for loss or no gain, but he made a very nice play, first play of the game. And I was like, oh, okay, we got one of those today. But then a little bit later on, he kind of gave up a really bad play. But anyway, um, the Baltimore Ravens, their defense, they started off this game Strong, and it was looking like okay, here we go. We about to have one of these days, ain't we? But then throughout this game, um, on defense, we of course uh, on the goal line plays uh, where, where the Broncos ended up getting their one and only touchdown of the game. Might I add, the Ravens' defense they were in a tough position. They called Bra Brandon Stevens for pass interference in the end zone, so the ball's placed at the one. It's like, all right, well. And I said it during the stream, like, I, I, if Ravens give up a touchdown here, I expect them to give up a touchdown here. Backs against the wall, literally on the one-yard line, like, yeah, they're probably going to give up a touchdown. But on first down, Broncos handed it off to the running back. Ravens stopped them for a loss. Or the fullback, I mean, excuse me, they stopped them for a loss. Second play, I don't even remember what the second play was. Then the third play was a pass that was, I think it was to little Jordan Humphrey. And he went up, but Bo Nix just... Put a little too much on it. Jordan Humphrey couldn't bring little Jordan Humphrey couldn't bring it down. So then on fourth down, they brought out the trick play. And I said, ooh, okay, they're bringing out trick plays? What are they doing? So they handed it off to somebody. Then he pitched it to somebody else. I think Corlin Sutton actually threw the touchdown to Bo Nix, I believe. But Bo Nix, he mossed Marcus Williams. I said, oh, that is a big yikes. Now, I did see a lot of Ravens fans saying, hey, it was a trick play. It's not Marcus Williams' fault. It's okay. It's not even Zach Orr's fault. It's okay. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Well, what about all them plays that aren't trick plays throughout the season? Who's that on? But anyway, it's cool. That, that was their only touchdown of the game. So shout out to the Baltimore Ravens defense because being talked about all year, not only being talked about, but just being bad all year. The Ravens defense has been bad all year. There's been so much miscommunication throughout the year. There's been so much blown assignment, so much guys running wide open all year. Now, I will say, in this game, there were still some guys running wide open. There really were. But it was that they starting to crack down on those things in this game, it seemed. In this game, I think I can only recall maybe one or two plays where I saw guys right before the play. Oh, my goodness, what do I got to do? What, what do I got to line up? What, 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 what do I need to go? I, I saw the miscommunication very little in this game. It was still there now. It was still there, but it was far less. Another adjustment that I saw from Zach Orr, like on third downs, but really in general, instead of them corners playing way back, way far off from the wide receiver, they were actually right up in front of the wide receiver, playing real man-to-man -man defense. And I appreciated that a lot, a whole lot. 
Something we also continue to see um, is no pass rush. That's still a big issue. Now, yeah, hey, 10 points, though. 10 points. You gave up 10 points. But you still have your issues that you need to get corrected. You got till Tuesday to make some changes, some trades, go after some players and whatnot. I know Ravens ain't done. I know Deontay Johnson was not the end-all, be-all for the Baltimore Ravens this year. Who they go after, no clue. I'm still saying Jadavian Clowney. But whoever the Ravens decide to go after, let's see. Because I, I know that for sure they ain't done yet. They can't be. Not with that defense. Because not every game is going to go like this one. In this game, we saw the defense give up yards. We saw the defense give up plays. Um, Arthur Millette, oof, wow. he, he gave up two touchdowns. But thank goodness that Bo Nix overthrew both of them. Because my goodness, he... he he got toasted twice for touchdowns, but Bo Nix put just a little too much on it. Thank, thank you, Bo. We appreciate you. We got all the love in the world for you for that, my friend. Because, oh, man, um, rough game for him at the cornerback position. Uh, Brandon Stevens, he was giving up plays as well. But um, overall, this Baltimore Ravens defense, again, bend, but they didn't break. They did not break. It took the only touchdown came on not only just a fourth down play, but a trick play. That was the only touchdown of the game that they got. Even on their last drive, what they got all the way to the one yard line. Ravens stopped them on fourth and goal at the one yard line to prevent them from getting another touchdown. This de this was the defense's best game. Maybe I mean I know there's there's a game against uh, Josh Allen. Two in the Bills, where they held them to 10 points. Well, you know, I guess, you know what? That's probably their best game. Reason being, because of the quarterback. Because it was against Josh Allen and not a Bo Nix. But this was their second best game. So we'll take it because we need to see more best from this Baltimore Ravens defense. We needed it bad. Let's go to special teams. Justin Tucker. <laughs> when Ravens got their first touchdown of the game. Ooh, Justin Tucker. He, uh... He hit the uprights, but thank goodness it ended up going in. Um, then there was another field goal where it looked like he was getting ready to miss it, but it stayed in. And there was, ooh, hey, JT, what you doing, my friend? But, hey, as long as they are going through the uprights and we're getting the points, that is what matters most. It's not style points. The field goals ain't been too sexy. You know, it's hard to get a sexy field goal, but still. Um... JT, he made his field goals. He made his point after touchdowns. That's what matters the most. Also, speaking of special teams, <laughs> Ravens offense was scoring like crazy. Tylen Wallace was sitting on the sideline, jelly. He's like, man, I done helped some of these big run plays. I ain't really been in on the action or no passing plays. But you know what? I'm jealous of these boys, man. I'm a wide receiver. I ain't really got no PT like that. But, you know, oh, hold up. I'll I be on punt return, all right? Oh, yeah, I do. You know what? Let me try to break one. And Tylen Wallace, he had a dangerous punt return because he had a defender that was right there in his area. But he caught the ball, made a miss, took it to the, uh, the left side of the field, made somebody else miss, and he was cutting up. But then he ended up getting tackled. I said, okay, Tylen. It was a nice little punt return. But I, I appreciated him giving his contributions to the team however he can, in whatever way he possibly can. Um, Jordan Stout. Jordan Stout, um, he had a really good punt where it was actually after the Ravens' first drive uh, because on Ravens' first drive, they ended up having a punt. Uh, then Jordan Stout pinned them back at the one. I want to say it was Ardarius Washington that downed it at the one, but it was a great punt, great special teams play. It was amazing. I said, okay, all right, now there we go. So that's what we like to see. It's nice to get the contributions from all phases of the team. This was a complete team win today everybody played their part and everybody did things the right there were still some hiccups here and there there were still some blunders here and there but everybody did what they had to do let's get to the offensive side of the that's what we've been waiting for right the offense because uh, 41 points no i know ain't none of y'all want to really talk about the defense like that none of y'all really, really want to talk about special teams 41 points we got to give a special shout out to obviously lamar jackson another Perfect passer rating. Another one. It's like he just wakes up and decides, you know what, today I'm going to get a perfect passer rating. Nah, whatever. Might as well. Might as well. And he goes and gets it. Lamar Jackson, is just, again, 
Amazing football. Three touchdown passes today. One to uh, old school wide receiver one, Pat Ricard. So shout out to Pat Ricard for, for catching the ball this time. Last time he had a pass on his way, he dropped it. And that would have went for a nice little chunk of yards. But it's okay. It's okay. But shout out to Pat Ricard because he caught that ball. And it's nice because the Baltimore Ravens, they had established a run with Derrick Henry. And because they established a run with Derrick Henry... That allowed them to do a play action and pass that ball to Pat Ricard and the defense, they ain't even see it coming. So that, that's why you, you cannot forget about the King, but we'll get to him in a second. But the other two passing touchdowns, they both went to the same exact person. And oh, by the way, somebody doing a live stream, they say, hey, where's the link to the hoodie? Where's the Zay Flowers hood? It's right here, my friend. Get your human joystick hoodie from Heart of the City. The link is in the description. The link to get to it is in the pinned comment. And you get a discount off of it as well. So use code engraven40. En code engraven40 to get 40% off your human joystick hoodie. And we got to see the human joystick again today. Zay Flowers been doing his thing. First, there was a touchdown where Lamar Jackson, it was right. Maybe like a four-yard touchdown pass. They were right by the goal line. And Lamar had to, he had to buy some time. He bought some time, and Zay Flowers, he helped him out for that. He came through. Lamar hit Zay Flowers in the back of the end zone. Zay was coming across the field. Lamar found him, saw him, hit him, and boom, touchdown. Beautiful. Beautiful. And that was crazy because that was Zay Flowers, his second touchdown of the year. And I was like, really? He really? Only two touchdowns? That's it? But then they were like, you know what? Get in the end zone. Zay Flowers was so nice. He's going to do it twice. And you think about that one. Um, that play was, it was 53 yards. Lamar put it on the money for Zay Flowers. Zay Flowers made two people miss. Then he took it to the outside. Then he cut up. But then there was number seven, Rashad Bateman. Rashad Bateman gave him the block that really sealed the deal. And Zay Flowers was to the house. Now, something that I want to highlight. How do we even get in that position in the first place to be able to get that touchdown? Well, as many times as we have all gotten on John Harbaugh for this or for that, for whatever it may be, but especially one of the things is clock management, poor clock management, terrible clock management, terrible time management. If we're going to get on Harbaugh and bring him down when he has terrible clock management, make sure you give a shout out to him and give him praise when he has great clock management. Because it was right before halftime, the Broncos had the ball and they were driving. And they were in the red zone, I believe. And Harbaugh called a couple of timeouts. Broncos end up having to kick a field goal. And they didn't score, but that left the Ravens, I want to say, 54 seconds left uh, for them to move the ball down the field right before halftime. So thank you, Harbaugh, for that wonderful clock management because it ended up giving the Ravens another touchdown. And even if we go before that, there was uh, the Broncos. They went for it on a fourth down where they did a pitch play to their running back. They tossed it to their running back or they pitched it to the running back and the running back. He ran and he ran and it looked like he got the first down, but then they showed the replay. And it looked like his knees actually went down before he got the first. So what did John Harbaugh do? As much as we get on John Harbaugh about bad challenges. Oh, my goodness. Why is he challenging, challenging that? Oh, my goodness. Why isn't he challenging that? We'll get on him about the challenges when they're bad. So make sure when they're good. You give him his credit. So got to give John Harbaugh credit for what was a good challenge in today's game. And it ended up getting overturned. Boom. Ravens get the ball. So good stuff. Hobbs yet again. Um, Baltimore Ravens offense uh, in this game. They started off slow, like literally because on the first drive, um, they really couldn't get it going. And then Lamar ended up getting sacked uh, and that took them out of field goal range. So they had to punt. But after that. It was smooth sailing. Smooth sailing. Looking at Lamar Jackson's numbers. Uh, Lamar was, excuse me, he was 16 out of 19 for 280 yards. Average 14.7 yards for play. Uh, and had three touchdowns, no interceptions. Had an almost interception. Oh, my goodness. Had an almost interception. Oh, man, I'm so glad that that player dropped it. I forgot. I think it was number 40, number 45 for the Broncos. I don't remember, but he dropped. I was, oh, I was like, thank you. And you know what happens, though? After, if your defense drops an interception, you know what happens afterwards, right? They're giving up a touchdown. 
And that's that's just that's the rule of football. That's how it goes. And you really you can't do anything about it. So on that drive where they dropped that where they dropped the pick, Ravens end up getting a touchdown. They end up getting one. So I mean, they end up getting a lot of touchdowns throughout a bunch of drives in this game, but on that drive specifically, where they dropped the interception, Ravens end up punching it in for six. So that was that. But anyway, uh, so Lamar Jackson in this game, perfect pass rate of 158.3. He was amazing. And again, Lamar Jackson throwing it all over the field. Uh, something that a lot of people have noticed with Lamar Jackson this year, extremely decisive with the ball. Extremely decisive, making his decisions um, accurate per usual. Just doing his thing, putting that ball all over the field, everywhere. The short stuff, taking what the defense has been giving them. Ravens have really been implementing the screen game a lot this year, and they've been doing such a phenomenal job of it. Such a great job in the screen game. So, and, and that has opened up the Baltimore Ravens offense that much more. Involving Derrick Henry in the passing game, too. That's another, just another level to this offense, man. That takes it to another level. Uh, there, was, there are games when, because I know some people today were like, oh, well, where's Isaiah likely yet? Why he ain't getting nothing? Why he ain't getting no passes thrown his way? John Harbaugh tried to tell us before. He told us, he said, hey, there are going to be games when you're wondering, why isn't this player doing good? Why isn't this player making catches, putting up numbers and whatnot? But this player over here is. This player over here is going off. And he said, that's what we want. We want an offense where it can be so diverse. And you can get it a lot of different ways. That's what the Baltimore Ravens have. And it's been a beautiful thing to see. Beautiful thing to see. Everybody ain't going to go off every week. But as long as the offense goes off as a whole every week, then we're good with that. Um, looking at Derrick Henry's numbers. This was a game, before we even look at the numbers, I was so proud of the Baltimore Ravens because literally from start to finish, they did not forget about Derrick Henry like they did last week. Last week, they forgot about him. Last week, well, it was like, hold up, is he still on the team? This week, they didn't forget. They really didn't. He had uh, 23 carries for 106 yards, averaged 4.6 yards per carry. He had two touchdowns. And you know what? Honestly, those numbers, that's a good game for Broncos defense. That's a good game against Derrick Henry this year. That's a good game. Even last, last week was a good game too. But th this was a good game against Derrick Henry. Even though he got 100 yards, even though he got two touchdowns, but holding him to only 4.6 yards per carry, even though that's still good, holding him to that, in 2024 on the Baltimore Ravens, this version of Derrick Henry, that's good. And that says a lot about how great he's been for this team. And he, he was great this game too. Uh, it wasn't his best game by all means, but he still did his thing. So shout out to Derrick Henry. Um, Justice Hill had five carries for 15 yards. Lamar, only three carries for four yards. Um, he had his longest run was 11, but then he, of course, lost some yards too. Uh, then Josh Johnson, he got a couple of QB sneaks uh, at the very, very end uh, of the game to close it out. So Ravens on the ground, um, modest, modest day for them, rushing. 34 carries for 127 yards, average 3.7 yards per carry, uh, and had two touchdowns. So, yeah, very, very modest day for them uh, on the ground. So but shout out to the Ravens because, again, <laughs> it was obviously more than enough to get the job done. Now back to the receivers. Um, again, Zay Flowers, uh, five catches for 127 yards. Five catches for 127 yards. Average 25.4 yards per catch. Get the hoodie, the human joystick. Zay Flowers is like that. We already knew that. But get your hoodie so you, you can really represent for Zay Flowers, man. Um, so he had five catches on six targets. And you know what? For the, for the longest, Lamar Jackson's only incompletion was a pass where he got pressured and he threw it to Zay Flowers, but it wasn't a good pass, and it ended up going a little short. Uh, Zay tried to catch it, but he couldn't. And so that, that's the only target that Zay Flowers didn't catch. Zay Flowers, he's been, like, really, even this whole season, most of the targets that go his way, they end up being receptions. Now, his counterpart, Rashad Bateman, mm. uh, he had three catches for 25 yards. I was like, okay, because he started off solid. And early on in the game, I said, man, he really be chilling with Zay Flowers a lot. Because Rashad Bateman caught a pass, then he started going backwards. I said, oh, yeah. Is that number seven or number four? But um, so those three, the three catches were cool, but then it was the fourth, the, well, the fourth target. And that's, that was his last target of the game. I don't, even think, I don't even think Lamar even looked his way the rest of the game. Correct me if I'm wrong, though, uh, but I'm pretty sure Lamar Jackson did not throw him any more passes for the rest of the game. Now, they weren't really throwing too much at, but... Yeah. Um, Rashad Bateman on that play. 
Because uh, Rashad Bateman, it, it, it's so tricky, man, because the poten- we've been seeing the potential. We've been seeing it. But over the past couple of weeks, it's, well, this week and last week, it's been like, hey, what? How? What are we doing? What, what's going on with these plays? Because he'll make some good plays for you now. He'll do that. But then he'll make some plays. It's like, it's like ah, what what's happening? And that drop, initially when I was watching it live, because Lamar, he made some people miss. He, just, a, just a crazy play from him. And then he threw it to Rashad Bateman. But I was thinking, oh, man, oh, that was such a tough catch to make. That's what I thought live. But then they showed the replay. I said, oh, man, that was, no, that was great. It was a great pass. It was a great play. Rashad Bateman just dropped it. He just dropped it. So with Rashad Bateman, I just really hope for his sake, first and foremost, then for the whole team's sake, the Baltimore Ravens offense's sake, that his confidence isn't shaken. And I can understand how it could be because of the game last week, how it ended, the drop, the impact that that had on the game with the drops because he dropped one on third down. Oh, so I guess there was a two on third down. Um, he dropped one that was maybe like an eight, nine-yard pass, and he dropped it. Then there was, of course, that deep pass with the son that he dropped. But then, so that that happens on Sunday, and then on Monday, was it Monday or Tuesday where they traded for Deontay Johnson? I think it was Monday. It's like that happens, on, that happens one day, then the, the following day they make a trade for somebody at your position who has a lot more experience than you. That's, if, if that ain't a confidence like shaker, then I don't know what is. Because that can really like, because you think about it like, man, I messed up big time on Sunday. Then the very next day, they end up getting somebody at my position who's been here and done that a lot more than I have. That's, 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 gotta, that's scary. So with Rashad Bateman, I just hope that this thing can get turned around. Because it's, it's seeming like he's starting to go like this a little bit. But we'll see. We'll see. Come Thursday. We'll see. We'll see the snap count and everything. With Deontay Johnson, he was out there a bit uh, in this game. Whenever he was on the field, like, good stuff happened. He ain't getting no passes thrown his way, but whenever he was on the field, good stuff happened in the run game. Like, so he need to be on the field. We, we love seeing it. So, and it's nice that Ravens, like, they got this rotation of receivers and stuff, even if it's just for blocking on run plays and whatnot. They got all these different receivers that they can use. It's like, yes. Where has this been? It's been like, oh, man, I just love it. But. Anyway, that was uh, Rashad Bateman. So we'll see if um, it, what happens with him uh, in the future. Justice Hill, uh, he had three passes. Now his longest was a 24-yard pass. It was a wheel route. And Justice Hill came out of the backfield and ran, 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 ran went right past the, the linebacker. And Lamar put it on him perfectly. Justice Hill made a tough catch. It was so beautiful to watch. It's just so beautiful. And this offense is just rolling. It's the, the most pretty thing to see. It's the, oh, we, we love it. Um, Derrick Henry, he had that one, that screen pass that went for 27 yards. Mark Andrews, he had two catches. So Mark Andrews been like, hey, I can't get in the end zone every week, but I'm going to contribute. Um, then Pat Ricard, we, of course, talked about his touchdown catch. Isaiah Likely, he had a pass thrown his way. He had a target, but it was incompletion. I believe that was where it was almost uh, intercepted because somebody had batted the line. Uh, I mean, batted the ball at the line of scrimmage, and it kind of they tipped it up in the air, and then that's when um, the Broncos linebacker, he almost caught the pick, but he, of course, dropped it. So that was nice. But anyway, uh, offensive line um, in this game. Um, oh, they, they run blocking. And they were going against a really tough defense. So, but I would say they, they did their thing for going up against that Broncos defense. The Broncos defense is tough. They tough. Like I said earlier, with Derrick Henry, for his numbers to look how they look, like, that's a good job by the Broncos defense. Even though he still he, 23 carries for 106 yards, two touchdowns. That might make me sound like I'm crazy. Oh, that's a good game against Derrick Henry? Yeah, for this year it is. Because we see how Derrick Henry be just be going off against pretty much everybody. So that's not necessarily a win for the Broncos defense, but that's a good game against him. Um, but, it's, again, it still wasn't enough. So Ravens offensive line in this game, run blocking. I say against for who they were going against, they did their thing. Pass blocking. <laughs> now, hey, look, Lamar did his thing there. So it obviously wasn't all bad, but still, it was. It was all right. It was all right. wasn't wasn't the worst for sure. It wasn't the worst, but it, it it was solid. I say it was solid. So, but yeah, man, I'm I'm glad the Ravens were able to get the job done because um, this was a big game for them, coming off a loss in the AFC in the division. 
Uh, then you got uh, another game against an opponent that's been doing their thing too. Uh, but they were able to get the win and get it convincingly. And now you got a game in four days. You were able to rest Lamar Jackson for just a little bit extra. Uh, rest Derrick Henry for just a little bit extra. Um, as you prepare to go against the Cincinnati Bengals on a really short week. And they're coming off a win too. So they're going to be fighting for this season. And they're going to be looking for any chance to try to damper the Baltimore Ravens season. So it's important that uh, the Baltimore Ravens find a way to get this done against the Bengals. But as for today against the Broncos... Great win. Again, great all-around team effort win uh, by the Baltimore Ravens and great way to get it, get contributions from all three phases of the game. Now, we normally wouldn't do this in the post-game thoughts video, but time is of the essence. And maybe, perhaps, maybe the next time I see y'all tomorrow, the Ravens may have already made a move. So some of these questions may be null and void. But nonetheless, we have gotten to my favorite part of these videos where we get to feature your questions. If you would like to be a part of it, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com or for the patrons. And if you would like to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash And let's give a special shout out to the newest Team Keep It Clean patrons, my guy Tyreek. And my guy, George H. So appreciate the both of you for being willing to become Team Keep It Clean patrons. And without further ado, let's get into these questions. First question came from my guy, BB. He said, what's up, Engraven? How would you feel about the Ravens trading their first round pick to the Jets for Sauce Gardner? Oh, uh, well, he would be better than Brandon Stevens. But, um, no, I, I would rather that go to a different position. I would rather that go to a, uh, a really, really, really good pass rusher instead of a, a, a corner. Because we just used a first-round pick on Nate Wiggins. We still got Marlon Humphrey. Um, and I know Brandon Stevens is out there a lot. They, they could change some stuff around. But I, I, I would much rather go to a really, really good pass rusher if it's going to be a first-round pick. Because I feel like you could still get a, a good corner uh, for something other than a first. Next question came from my guy. See, he said, hey, Graven, this is my first question all the way from Cape Town, South Africa. Ooh, I appreciate you, man. Uh, he said, I hope you're doing well and that the family is great, too. No, no, we, we're good. I hope you're doing even better. He said, do you think Todd Munkin allows teams to dictate his play calling? I mean, <laughs> he sent this before the game, though. This was yesterday, so he ain't sent this today. But he said, do you think team Todd Munkin allows teams to dictate his play calling? Looking back to the AFC Championship game, we saw the Chiefs shut down the run game and Todd shifted heavily towards the pass. That seemed to happen on opening night and again in recent game against the Browns. Derrick Henry even put the Browns' top pass defender on concussion watch, but then barely got the ball as they focused on stopping the run. Ah, uh, It's tough because if, if you're going against a good defense and they take away something that you do really good, then, yeah, that is going to dictate how you call the plays. But, see, with... The AFC Championship game, the Chiefs were not stopping the Ravens on the ground. The Ravens just stopped. They said, oh, well, whatever, we ain't going to do it. And then in, in, in this last game, uh, well, not the last game, the first game of the season against the Chiefs, uh, the Chiefs got up to a lead, and the Ravens, they were just going past happy to try to get back in the game. So that limited Derrick Henry right there. Then the Browns, the Browns were just, they were really stopping Derrick Henry. They were stopping the Ravens' run game. But then the Ravens, they, they stopped going to him. So Ravens just... Sometimes they can be inconsistent when it comes to the play call, especially when it comes to the run game. But in this game today, I'm glad that they weren't. He said, Lamar is a great passer, and now we have uh, Deontay Johnson, who is an excellent man-to-man -man beater, making this team one of the top passing threats with Zay Bateman and DJ, not to mention a tight end trio. Mandrews likely in Kolar, but the offense needs to balance to live up to his pick-your-poison potential, which we seem to lose whenever Munkin pulls back on a run game at the first sign of resistance. What do you think? Yeah, I, I, I agree. Ravens just, you got to stick to what works and stick to what's working. And with Derrick Henry, he's somebody that you just got to keep feeding over and over and over. Next question came from my guy, Javo. He said, do you think the Cowboys will give us Zach Martin? Oh, a sneaky move on the offensive line, which is a sneaky trade possibility. But I, I don't think so. I um, Well, the Cowboys did just lose today, and he actually sent this uh, yesterday. Um, but uh, the Cowboys did lose, so... That could they still fight in though, but it ain't really looking too good with the cowboy right now. They still got the Eagles and the Commanders that's way up top of the room, so yeah. Um, but if the Ravens were to give up something significant like a second round pick or something like that, I think it could, but I don't think the Ravens will. Next question came from my guy Joey. He said, New role for Roquan. Hey, Raven, hope you and yours are doing well. I was noticing against the Broncos what people were mentioning about Roquan. He seems to be very sluggish in coverage this year. Uh, putting my Madden cap on here, what would you think about moving a safety like Ardarius Washington or Hamilton down to Roquan's spot to pair with Simpson and having Roquan move to more of a hybrid pass rushing and shallow coverage role? Um, no. Uh, a safety like Ardarius Washington or Hamilton to Roquan? Ro. Where Hamilton, I would not want him to be just in one role. I want him to be everywhere like he's continued to be because that's where he excels at, literally everywhere. Ardarius Washington, too small for to be a, as a linebacker. 
too too small for that. That that wouldn't be a, a good move. And Roquan as a pass rusher, I'm not really a big fan of Roquan as a pass rusher. It it just ain't been looking. Good. That's just my opinion. It ain't been really looking good. He said the middle of the field seems to be weak against tight ends and crossing wide receivers and adding more talent to the pass rushing group seems like a move that could shake things up without making big trades. Now, I know this is a crazy idea, but pairing this with someone else's idea of moving Stevens to a Hamilton S safety role might boost the current scheme and give us our own version of a no fly zone. Thanks for the reading. Keep up the great work, bro. Appreciate that, Joey. Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't move Roquan to make him like more of a hybrid pass rusher or having having him in shallow coverage. I mean, yeah, no, I just don't think that would be a good look for him. I just, but I think the biggest thing for him, in my opinion, is just, and I don't know what's going on behind the scenes, but from what we see with all naked eyes when we're watching the games, I think the biggest thing for him would be maybe getting in better shape. And I hate, I hate saying it. I'm, I'm sitting here on my chair and I'm watching the games. I'm just a fan. So I hate saying stuff, something like that. Because again, I don't know the ins and outs. Because it could be something way past that, way beyond that. But, um, Maybe it's just a lack of a grasp of the defense. Because, again, there are a lot of times throughout this year when we've seen guys just not knowing where to be at. Maybe there's still been a, a learning curve or something like that. Maybe. So, I, I don't know what it is. Potential pass rusher option. Next question came from my guy Alex. He said, as I watch the Baltimore defense, I have been thinking of possible options to push this team to the next level. And Michael Parsons might be the option as the Cowboys have been declining in play and the Ravens have been soaring up. He may find himself wanting to get out of Dallas, so not wanting to lose their pass rusher without compensation – which we could trade Ojabo and a second for him. I would love to hear your thoughts on this engraving. Take care and peace. Oh, my goodness. If if that was a trade, every single one of us Ravens fans would be signing up for it right then and there. If they were to trade David Ojabo and a second-round pick, and that's it, to get Michael Parsons, oh, my goodness, that would be great. But that's just – for only trading that for Michael Parsons – we know that definitely wouldn't happen. Next question came from my guy Derek. He said, Engraven, I'm at a red light. Let's cut to the chase right now. How about trading for Khalil Mack? What do you think, my brother? So, you know me. I, I'm more of a Jadavian Clowney kind of guy. But um, Khalil Mack, like, hey, if he still could get the job done, like, I'm, I'm all for it. I, I'm for whoever is going to be. Because I don't, I don't want them to just make a move to say, hey, we made a move. I would want them to get an impact player, somebody that can come in and contribute like that, make impact plays like that, not just get a pass rusher to say, oh, okay, we, we got a pass rusher now. Hopefully, hell, no. Don't go with no – you can't go with no safe move. Not with this – you cannot go with no safe move. You need to go look for a game wrecker, a game changer, somebody that can come in and just make a big difference on your defense like that. If it's going to be Khalil Mack, okay, cool. If it's Jadavian Clowney, hey. Okay, cool. That's cool, too.